this When one. you look at these pictures of the paratroopers, but, but. those are, those are quick drop paratroopers. Looking for somebody to uh, move their white Jeep Cherokee, license 2 TPV 660, white Jeep Cherokee, you're blocking an ambulance zone. You need to get it out of there, they're going to a little bit different. Give you a little uh, look-see at a real unique aircraft. Well, what is the G What's in the G <laughs> That's already firing up over on the east side. This has been nicknamed the Hulk because of its green paint scheme. It's a common K-Max. Common, C-A-M-A-N. Looks like Cayman, but it's more of a workhorse kind of helicopter. It's a unique configuration. This is used a lot for construction, for firefighting, and logging operations. It's a 1,700 horsepower engine. It weighs 6,000 pounds. And uh, Brian Jorgensen is the pilot. Flying that. This is owned by Timberline Helicopters from Laclede, Idaho. It's way up around the northern panhandle of Idaho, up there in the Coeur d'Alene area. They do a lot of lumber work with this baby, and they brought it down for some special work here. They're actually in town working for PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric, on 230 kilovolt transmission line from Moss Landing to the Metcalf substation. So they actually use the helicopters for that. And this is a twin rotor configuration. Twin engine, so twin rotor, kind of rotating man. props that are canned off to the side. You'll see them a little better once the airplane gets in the That's air. Like You'll see this chopper. It's a rather unique sound. Yeah. He looked it. Maybe he's Working off the same principles as uh, most helicopters, but the rotor's been a lot slower than, for instance, our R-44 does. That's uh, coming in over on the west side of our field right now. And this guy is designed to really do some heavy-duty work for us. He'll be up in the sky here, giving us a little demonstration in just a moment. He's got a 100-foot long line on tap. It's a very narrow cockpit, so the pilot has a bubble windshield, or bubble side windows, actually, on each side, so he can lean out and still be able to see uh, what's going on down below. A lot of times he spends in a, in a hover, hauling something up or down in the way of timber or some equipment that needs to be placed precisely someplace, like a power line, towers, and the like. So he can lean right out of the cockpit there from each. And it also makes it very highly maneuverable, and it's also relatively quiet for a helicopter. The twin turbine engines uh, drive it through. Brian Jorgensen, uh, it's only 27 years old, but he's already got 6,000 hours of cockpit time logged in his logbook. 5,000 hours in this type of helicopter alone, so he's gotten very serious about uh, working this airplane. He's just going over staging something there and uh, getting ready to come back and do a demonstration for us. Uh, look at that. He's been, oh, now wait a minute. I think I know what's going on here. That's that white Jeep Cherokee that we oh, that the Watsonville police told us about that was blocking the ambulance zone. Okay. <laughs> they said they were going to tow it away. They're going to tow it away. Look at this. This is how we do it at an air show, ladies and gentlemen. We just don't get the tow trucks out there. We tow it away. Yes, sir, racer. This is how you tow a car out of it. That's been blocking the lane there. There's your, there goes your Jeep Cherokee. You didn't get out there in time to move it. We'll move it for you. Yeah, look at that, baby. See, that shows you what uh, kind of power this helicopter has. Can take this thing up to the sky without even breaking a sweat. Figure, uh, why not? We'll just move the car with the chopper and have a little fun there. Yeah, looking good. Look at this thing going straight up into the sky. Look at that maneuverability. Carrying the weight of a Jeep Cherokee underneath. Looking real good, huh? How about that? That's the way to do it. That's why this is used for utility work like power lines and timber and all that. Look at the stability of this aircraft. In spite of the wind, you can just make it hover up there. Whoa! Uh oh, 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 we got, oh my goodness. Oh no. There goes the Jeep Cherokee. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Well, that one won't be four-wheel driving anytime soon. I don't oh, boy. I don't believe it. Well, let that be a lesson to you, huh? We ask you to move your car. I'll tell you, as luck would have it, we've got the good folks from uh, Bay City Tow around here. They're usually on the field. Richard Casero. He's been uh, operating this uh, tow company here in Watsonville for, well, since 1983. 
uh, service all of Santa Cruz County and uh, also have another facility out in Los Banos, California, towing and long distance road recovery and all kinds of stuff. So they work pretty hard. So he's got his his big rig out here. Going to uh, get, get this car up on a tow truck there. Uh, doesn't look to be much air left in those tires. <laughs> That's usually the first thing that'll go. That'll blow. Well, I don't know what the Watsonville Police Department's going to do with this baby, but I guess they'll take it over to their yard. I don't know how they're going to get this thing on the truck. Hey, wait a minute. I think Jay's got an idea. He's on the radio right now. He's already burned 50 gallons. Yeah, I think he's got this thing figured out. He's getting on the horn with Brian Jorgensen there in the common helicopter. Hey, man. You got a rope on that thing, bring it back over here. You dropped it, you pick it up. All right, let's see if we can do this trick. Can he pluck it out of the park? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Since we don't have a crane at hand, we may as well just go ahead and use the helicopter. See if we can uh, get that Jeep back up here. Gosh, he had to be up around 500 feet when that thing let go. Man, that's a long ride for any Jeep Cherokee. All right, let's see this thing in action now. Tim's going to lead this thing right in, moving sideways with the wind. Wait for a signal from the ground crew. To get our tow... Uh, Tow truck there, or a rig in place. Tim's got a great view of this thing, of course. All right, we're getting the signal. Come on in and pick it up. That shows you what uh, you can do with a rotor wing aircraft. Bring it right down to the height of a guy. Six feet down on the ground, hook up the cable. Looking good, add a little bit more power. This thing hardly even breaks a sweat. Let's see what we can do with this here. We've got enough truck. There you are, ladies and gentlemen, a Jeep Cherokee doing an impression of a pancake. Now that's a slam truck for you. Whoa. There's just not much left of that car. So, uh, let that be a lesson to you. Next time we tell you your car parked in front of an ambulance zone, it might behoove you to get out there and move it right away. <laughs> These guys don't mess around. Look at this. And Brian is able to look out either side of that cockpit, see exactly what he's doing. He successfully put it on the truck, let go of the rope. He's clear and done. Oh my God! All right. Yeah. Air boss says we got a little time to show off the common helicopter here. A little utilitarian aircraft. It's an amazing thing. Most of us are familiar with aviation in that we fly on the airlines. We fly the. You know, usually the commu uh, commuter airlines, the turboprops, and of course the jets that take us across country or across the oceans of the world. That's commercial aviation. But general aviation enfolds a lot of different operations. Everything from corporate aircraft to uh, utility aircraft such as these helicopters.